I have Weston Wilson back on the show now who picked up a round one side choke win at XMMA4 Black Magic this past weekend. Weston, how are you? Doing good, man. Doing really good. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest wins of your career, if not maybe the biggest win of your career. And you said, I saw in a social media post recently that you were more nervous for this fight. Why was that? You know, so I work with... Um... One of our wrestling coaches, Steve Devaney, um, well, actually, I shouldn't say wrestling coach because he, he's a lot more than wrestling coach. Um, uh, he's, he's one of our assistant coaches at um, Upstate Karate. Um, you know, he's my, my mindset coach. And so we've been really harnessing in, like, that's always been my biggest weakness um, in MMA is, is probably just my mindset it hasn't always been right before fights. Um, and so we, we've harvested that in. And obviously, you know, I'm six and one in the last seven. Um, <clears throat> And uh, the only loss was actually at the weight class. But, um, you know, so we've worked really hard on, on kind of relaxing under pressure and just not being nervous and, and really finding the fun and the love of fighting. And um, so I don't know, I was, I was really, really nervous um, because I think I wasn't able to do all like my normal process. I was on vacation and it was a short week or a short notice. Plus, it was my first time back down to 45 or doing the full cut to 45 and done a couple of catch weights at 150. Um, so, yeah, so I was, I was, uh, and, and like when I arrived to New Orleans, everybody kept saying, like, oh, this kid, he's got a lot of hype behind him because he beat Ty Clark, who was on the Ultimate Fighter. He knocked him out, you know, and, and, uh, Dustin Poirier speaks highly of him and, and all this other stuff. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever. So like, I, I was getting a little nervous for it, but you know, uh, Coach T and I, right before the fight, we we're hanging out in the room, and I was telling him, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm nervous. He's like, just let that left hand fly and don't worry about the rest. So that's that's exactly what I did. The very first punch I threw was my left hand, and didn't worry about the rest after that. What is this win, especially after everything, you know, mentally prior to the fight that you went through? What, what does this do for your confidence? It must be at an all-time high right now. Yeah, uh, you know, I am the last six fights. They're all first-round finishes, uh, a couple knockouts, a couple of uh, chokes. And I do have some big names on my, my, uh, resume. my resume, you know, um, like that Javier Garcia kid, he's been doing well in, in LFA. I think he even fought for the LFA title. Um, I, I'm the only person to put him to sleep. Uh, I put this kid to sleep. Um, and so, yeah, like it's no longer just luck. Like in my mind, I'm always thinking like, I'm just really lucky, I guess. Like I'm just winning these fights by luck. But, I, you know, it's, it's not luck anymore. And for the last two and a half years, my confidence has been growing and growing because – I mean, I'm training with Wonder Boy, and then we get guys like Chase Hooper and Ryan Hall and, and Chris Weidman, and we get big names that come in and, and they train. And every single guy that's come in and trained, they're like, how are you not in the UFC yet? Like, dude, you're a monster on, in the, you know, on the mats. So, like, just hearing all these guys who have made it before me, like, tell me how good I am, it's, it's really boosted my confidence and giving me my own little, you know, swagger. For sure, man. And yeah, three wins in a row now, six of your last seven. This event in general, this XMMA4 event was a pretty huge event to be on. There was a lot of big names on this card and a lot of eyeballs uh, on this card, you know, watching, you know, your fight and all the other ones. What, what is this win right here? What does this do for you, Weston, here moving forward? You talk about people saying you should be in the UFC. This has got to be getting you a little bit closer to maybe getting that call, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think so. Um, you know, I think out of all of the fights on the card, I think I had one of the fastest finishes of the night. Um, so, you know, I, I showed that I'm, I'm a finisher. I can go in there and handle business on a, you know, two week notice, uh, showed I'm professional. I can make weight, um, and, and that I can hang with just about anybody. Um, and, you know, really not take damage. And, and, and I don't know, I, I think, you know, moving forward, I, I definitely, I would like, you know, one of the, the guys on the next XMMA card, um, from what I'm told that it, it's looking like it's going to be end of June or July in Greenville, South Carolina. So where I'm from, 
Um, so I'm hoping that we get on that card and I'm able to do, you know, the, the same thing I've done on the last two, put the guys, my opponent to sleep um, or, you know, knock them out one. Either way will be fine, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm hoping I get a, a call up to um, the UFC soon or, you know, uh, getting another big opportunity like that just to showcase my skills and, and my talent. Um, cause like I've said in the past, like, I'm not really doing this for money. I'm, I'm doing this for my legacy, for my daughters and, uh, you know, my, my posterity to see, you know, uh, that whatever they want to do, they can, they can make it happen because if I can do it, you know, with fighting in the UFC, then they can do it. We'll get back to your, uh, upcoming fight, uh, whenever that may be, uh, here shortly, but first I want to go back for a second for anybody that didn't get to see this finish, run us through how it presented itself. Um, yeah. So like I said, the, the, the very first thing coach C told me to do is to stick that, that left hand. Um, so I, I, I stuck him with that left and I think after that point, he didn't really want to strike with me. He was looking to close the gap. Um, so we ended up in a little scramble. I threw a knee. Uh, and I barely missed the knee. He, he came underneath me and took me down. I, I pulled guard um, and uh, I was able to get back to my feet and I went for the same left hand. Uh, but as I was getting back to my feet, I kind of knew where his neck was going to be um, because he was, as I hit butterflies, he kind of showed me where he was liking to put his head. So when we got back to the feet, um, I threw that same left hand that I threw in the beginning. He ducked under it and ducked exactly where I thought the head would be. And so I was able to kind of fall to the side uh, with a really deep guillotine. Um, and uh, from that point, it was five seconds. Uh, from the moment he shot his head to the side to the moment he was asleep, it was only five seconds. So uh, I got him in a really, really tight choke. Um, I was able to kind of fall to the side. I teach, I actually teach this choke um, to all my, my students um, at, for my jujitsu class. Um, and I teach that very thing of, of you know, going to the side there, covering uh, and not really squeezing with your arms. It's, it's more of a using your core to uh, uh, engage the choke. So um, he went right into to where I, I, you know, specialize um, on the mats. So it was, it was nice to be able to, to pull that off. You know, that my last loss, I, I attempted the same exact thing, but the kid was a little bit bigger. Um, so it was a little bit harder. So I also went back and made sure that, you know, I wouldn't fail on that choke again, like when it presented itself. High IQ uh, for yourself to notice that his tendencies where he was going to put his his head there and, and ultimately get that that finish here in this fight. Uh, as far as celebrating the win, what did you guys do afterwards? You're in New Orleans. Did you go out at all or did you just kind of kick back to watch the fights? So I, I went back to the room. I called a few people. I dropped off my my equipment and then I came back uh, and we watched the fights. Coach Tina, I watched the fights and then uh, UNC Duke game had just ended. We were in the same hotel as UNC. There was a sea of light blue uh, and we could not get back into the hotel. Like we fought through a crowd of people trying to get through, you know, and uh, there's a couple of UFC fans that recognize Coach T and so they helped us out and uh, they helped us get to, uh, you know, a door that was less crowded. And then uh, we... Went back up to the room. He dropped off a few things. Coach, she dropped off a few things. And then we went to try to find food. And it was like 1030 at night. And we couldn't find anything open or anything that was open had like a two to three hour wait. So it was nuts. We ended up walking like all the way up to the Superdome and found a couple food trucks or a food truck and just ordered like some cheap cheeseburger. Uh, didn't even have like real cheese. It just had shredded cheese on it. And uh, cost us like forty bucks <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> for two for two cheeseburgers and two drinks. It cost us like forty bucks. And then we walked back, uh, and we had our flight get delayed. It was it was a madhouse getting back. Our flight got delayed. We missed our connecting flight back to Greenville, and everything was booked out of Atlanta. So they were like, "Yeah, you got to be there. stay overnight." And so I was like, "Whatever." It's only two and a half hour drive back home. So I called my wife. I was like, "Hey, can you can you pick me up? Like, I can't get back from Atlanta unless you know 
you want me getting back a day later? She was like, all right, we'll be there in a second. And so two and a half hours later, they picked me up. Uh, yeah, so it was not much celebrating, you know, we, we didn't really, it was, there was so much celebration going on in New Orleans that weekend for Final Four yeah. that, you know, they, they did it all for us. Are you a basketball fan? Not really. No. I, I like I, I like to follow like those once in a generation style players. Um, that that's more my extent on team sports is I like to follow like players and storylines, not so much teams. So like I used to hate Tom Brady growing up, and now I'm like the biggest Tom Brady fan. Uh, I like Baker Mayfield. Uh, I like guys who like can come into a program and shake it up, like Joe Burrow. Man, that was cool. Uh, the way that he's been able to to shake up the Bengals like that. So that's more like what I like to follow. Um, uh, same thing like basketball is, is if there's like a big, you know, popular player, I'll follow them and kind of see the impact. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm, I'm an enormous Tom Brady fan. I definitely would, would rival you for his biggest fan uh, award because I, I just idolize. Oh, you, beat me. you beat me for sure. <laughs> I, I would I was super bummed when he retired though. I was like, come on, man, you gotta go for the you gotta go for another one. Like you can't finish with that, you know, like especially when you were so close to making it to the Super Bowl again. It was a freaking walk-off field goal. Yeah. I, I am I am so happy that he's come back for another season. Still a Patriots fan first, but uh, Tom Brady's my guy. I'm definitely cheering for him. Do you think he's gonna go to Miami or is he gonna stay? Yeah, no, he's he's going to – I don't think he has a choice because of his contract. He has to stay in in Tampa Bay. Uh, and, and I think just one more year, and then he's done. I, I really can't see him playing again. I, I'd like to see him play till he's 50, but, you know, who, who knows. But I'm just a sports nut in general. I don't know if you can see the UNC jersey behind me up on the wall. 100%. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Tar Heels basketball fan, and my brother's a Duke fan. And so, you know, we had that little competitive rivalry right there. I didn't even say anything to him Saturday night after we beat him. I texted him Monday night and just said, hey, are you wearing Carolina blue tonight? And, and he was so upset with me that I even say that. I'm like, come on, take, <laughs> you got to take a little bit of a joke. I didn't, I didn't rib you at all <laughs> Saturday night. But that must have been such a cool place to be in with all of that going on so many high level sports uh you know events going on that weekend it just must have been a lot of fun a lot of energy there oh yeah i mean it was it was electric like you could feel it in the air like we we walked down bourbon street for a little bit and then coaching like we gotta get away from all these people man there's just too many crowds um but yeah the whole week like was just buzzing everywhere you went you know there's people there was you know banners of you know all the teams um I got to see all the, the team buses. Uh, and, and, you know, like it was kind of like for me, the, the storyline I was following was, was Coach Cakes. It was his last, you know, it was his last year. And, and I, I really like a good coach's story. Um, and they're kind of going over his, his stats, uh, you know, 1,200 wins. I think he put in like 280 players into the NBA or something like that. Crazy. Like, just nuts and then to go out on a note like that where it's just such a close loss you know but then you had unc who was you know the eighth seed was that the highest seed uh lowest seed that made it to the to championship a... I'm, I'm not sure if there was a lower seed that made it to the championship if if there was it hasn't happened that many times uh yeah but there's not many eight seeds or you know bigger that make it so yeah, and Carolina's a blue blood, so I mean they easily could have been ranked higher. They play in such a tough division, but it, any it, aside from that, for for you, Weston, I mean this XMMA four event, this Black Magic uh, event, uh, really there got a lot of attention. Like I said earlier, all in all, like how did that event uh, go off for you? Like, did you feel like everything went off smooth and it was just a, a marquee regional MMA show? Man, XMA is awesome. So this is my second time fighting for them. Um, they always bring in great talent, what they're doing, you know, where they're giving some of these uh, regional prospects uh, a chance to showcase themselves. Um, and and then they're also a home for a lot of these, you know, ex-UFC vets and, and ex-Bellator vets uh, for them to keep fighting. Like, it's, it's pretty awesome. And the way that they treat the fighters, they're really treating the fighters, um, you know, like they're, they're, they're the stars and, and uh, 
tons of swag interviews they bring in a lot of media guys uh as, as part of the show to to do you know various social media things with them uh they're putting you up in in nice hotels they're not putting you in in scrubby crummy motel six down the road with cockroaches and you're just like oh you know they're bringing you out early they're bringing your coaches out so um and, and they're taking care of you the whole week so it, it's it's pretty awesome um i, I couldn't speak higher of xmma and you know i'll i'll fight for them anytime they want me to to fight for them i i would fight for them um you know and, and the whole time they, they're super cool with me before the fight super cool with me after the fight they were like hey i mean they're like do you want the mass sales fight i was like heck yeah i want the mass sales fight so you know like we're, we're gonna try to make it happen i don't know if it's gonna happen or not um you know i have yet to hear from that party so i i don't know uh i don't know if sales will want that fight it's not a stylistically good fight for him but um i'm a striker who can grapple and he is a striker who cannot grapple so we'll see uh if, if you know that's a fight he wants I, I doubt it though um there was crickets on on the other side uh and they've had a week to respond now so um but yeah xma they're awesome i love what they're doing um and they're really smart. Like they, they were the only, you know, MMA sh show that weekend. And so, yeah, there was a ton of eyes on it and they had some awesome fights. You know, my teammate Sweeney killed it. That fight was probably fight of the night. If not the, uh, the Bochniak minus fight was also incredible. Uh, minus for dropping from 170 to 145. He looked dang good, man. <laughs> that weight cut did not affect him whatsoever. So is there anybody else that comes to mind that, that you, if that sales fight doesn't come to fruition, I know there was another guy that, that fights at featherweight and he ended up fighting at, I think it was a catchweight belt because his opponent couldn't make weight, but Adley Edwards is nine, one and one. And this is a guy that's right on the, the doorstep and maybe make it into the UFC. Is that something that interests you? Uh, we have the same management, so I don't know if, if that would happen. Um, you know, I don't maybe uh i know it's stylistically it's interesting it's an interesting fight for sure um so we'll see what happens we'll see what xmma offers um i think Adley's probably trying to look to fight an ex ufc vet as well um just because that seems to be the you know catapult into the ufc is you beat an ex you know ufc guy then you get to take that spot so i don't know i mean honestly it's whatever you know my coaches and managers say uh i do have a lot of input on on a lot of that stuff um uh, but yeah i mean I, I don't know that edwards and i would fight each other because of management but it could could happen um i think i'm a little bit taller than he is but um it'd be an interesting fight for sure but 45 that's where you want to stay moving forward is, is or are you planning on uh, fighting at 55 or any catchweight belts um, so my whole thing is I'll fight 55, I'll fight 70, I'll fight 85 last year. Um, I, I don't weigh nearly that, those weights. Um, I have this thing though, where, you know, if I, if I'm going to fight a prospect, I'm going to fight a prospect in my old weight class. Um, but I, my last loss was at 55 against a, a tough opponent, Carson Frey. Um, I think if we were the same weight, I would have beat him, but, uh, I also had some mental hiccups going into that fight. Um, hold on one second. Uh huh. Okay, I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, sorry, my daughter's coming in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I think you know, forty-five is definitely where I'm going to stay moving forward. The weight cut's not super hard. I'm not super big. I do have a, I call a cheat code. Um, this year, I, I bought a hyperbaric oxygen chamber and so that has paid pay dividends like i was able to take that fight on two weeks and be out on vacation for a week before the fight um and my cardio was i didn't even break a sweat i mean granted it was it was only you know a two minute fight but i didn't break a sweat at all um or any sort of like cardio problems so 
Cardio is king, man. That's uh, good. You're keeping that uh, right on point. Uh, and so time frame, you did say summertime, June, July is when you're hoping to jump back in there? Um, shoot, I'm ready to go May if, if I can get something. So if we go May and then XMMA in June, and then we'll sit back and see what the UFC wants to do or, or you know, uh, any of the other big shows. Well, let's see. So I'm, I'm hoping to get two two in by July and then just stay ready for anything short notice for a big show. I love it, man. C congrats again on your recent win at XMMA for Black Magic. Again, Weston Wilson, always great talking to you, my man. Before I let you go, I want to give you the floor, tell people where to follow you on social media. And if you have anyone to thank, any sponsors, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, at Weston Wilson, W-E-S-T-I-N. I uh, like the hotel. It's where you can follow me. Um, and you'll occasionally see me pop up on Wonder Boy's YouTube channel as well. So give Wonder Boy a follow uh, if you're not already. I mean, who isn't following him? Um, <laughs> but also, uh, yeah, man, uh, definitely my coaches, Coach uh, Ray Thompson, Coach Steve Davini, um, big props to them. You know, the Upstate Karate family, pitch, Team Pitch Black, like, uh, couldn't be more happy with with them and 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 uh, the love and support that they've given me over the last two and a half years. Um, definitely been a big game changer for me uh, in in my MMA career. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all the the gratitude in the world is is directed towards them.